Uh, okay, so where do you sit on the with the Phil Spector record? Do you do you oh, love it's, it? I love it. And I mean, you know, it, it's, it, you know, now, I mean, it definitely has an asterisk because obviously with everything that happened in his personal life and his crimes, like you just can't excuse those. But, you know, you listen to the songs and the songs and like, you know, all the musicians on there that doesn't, you know, their contributions and the songs and just the way they performed. It's just, you know, there aren't interestingly enough that many, you know, Christmas albums that work and hang together as an album. You know, I think the Beach Boys definitely does. Um, and but like the Phil Spector one, you know, 100 percent does. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, that kind of like invented a whole new strain of Christmas music when you listen to it. It's just, you know, and that one could have had, you could have included a lot of songs on there and I limited it to two, but you know, there it's just, you know, it's a perfect record. It's impossible. Right. Right. And my, my the fun fact I always, re I always mention to people, what day was it released? I don't remember. What is it? It was November 22nd, 1963. Right. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so there's a reason why it got overshadowed <laughs> that year when it was released. There were other other things in the news that people were more preoccupied with. Yeah. Tough yeah. day. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Tough day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a testament to that album is that it it's yeah, it just grows. I just every year I just I pull it out and I I place it. That's when I know it's it's Christmas time when that when that's Aww. on. <laughs> that starts playing <laughs> now when do you start playing that's the thing do you have you say does it have to be a specific day to start listening to christmas music usually at like uh, the day after well like thanksgiving the day after is okay. when I, I used to work for a company that did christmas music we did in stores so i was listening to christmas music in july so, wow. <laughs> so did you did you program that channel, Dave, or did you, oh, yeah, were you just, yeah, the, you I did a lot of that. Yeah. We put okay. it, I mean, we sprinkled in, it, you know, I had a lot of rock stations that I did, but we also did in stores. So we had to have all this music ready to go. They, you know, everybody wanted on November 1st, and, you know, it's, uh -huh. <laughs> you got to prepare for it. I mean, all these artists recorded this music in July, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And they wrote these songs. It would be like, you know, in the middle of, you know, like August in the steamy weather. And they're like, I'm going to cool down and write a Christmas song. There are so many of those. <laughs> that was very surprising to me as well. Right. You have to do that. I, I read like a lot of these artists, they, they will put in the studio, like set up a Christmas tree and lights and just kind of create this atmosphere in the middle of, in July and just kind of like, okay, let's try and get in the mood here. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I, I'm actually very surprised that you having that job that you still like Christmas music that much. I, if you're programming stuff like that's the type of thing that people just get like can't do it anymore. We're we're done. Yeah. No, I, I get it. I still 